Well, hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. Today, I want to talk about this app. It's the Emerald Observatory from a developer, Emerald Sequoia. Now, Emerald Sequoia has some other apps for iOS, and they've got some apps for Android. And if you got a smartwatch using the Google uh, smartwatch uh, system, they've got some good stuff for that too. I'm going to focus just on this right now because I've had this app for at least the last eight years. Uh, it's 2020 right now, and uh, I've just I've had this for the longest time. And over those years, there have been some minor updates, bug fixes, and and other things to make it more compatible every time that uh, you know iOS gets updated or something like that. So uh, not a lot has changed on this app over the years. I think I paid 99 cents for it uh, way back when, and of course I just get the updates uh, with no additional charge whenever that's necessary. So this is the latest version that I have. I don't think this has been updated for you know over a year, but it's been solid and it's been great. So let me just show you what this app does. Okay, so first of all, as you see in the middle here, you have uh, well, what looks like a regular clock with a whole bunch of things added to it. So that's showing you the, the local time right here. And the neat thing about this is it's, it's not necessarily using the internal clock on my tablet to tell me what the local time is. Way down here, I wanna show you, there's a little green light there. And what that indicates is, it's consulted some time servers online to give me the exact correct atomic time, even if that doesn't necessarily agree with the internal clock on my tablet, this with that green dot means it has successfully found an atomic time server. So it's showing me the time in you know, hours, minutes, and this uh, sweep second hand, continuous movement second hand is in line with the atomic time. So that's neat. Now, if I go in here and just uh, shut off the, uh, the Wi-Fi, you can see where that little dot has turned yellow uh, indicating, oh, wait a minute, I don't necessarily have the correct uh, atomic time right now. So that's kind of a fun thing. I'll leave that on for now. So uh, this is an observatory app. So as you see here, there are some dials inside this main clock. This one shows solar time, so it's not necessarily the same as the local time. And what, what that means is, well, if I lived in Denver or very close to Denver, then, um, you know, when, when this thing says 12 o'clock straight up noon, that would be close to when the sun reaches its highest point in the sky that day. But since I live uh, near Salt Lake City, and so I'm significantly west of Denver, uh, that's why the time doesn't uh, line up exactly. So uh, for me, you know, when, when the sun reaches its highest point in the sky, it's about 20 minutes later than when it does in uh, Denver. And so that's why solar time versus local time is uh, not exactly right here. Then as you see, UTC is right there and it's showing me that uh, it's, it is Monday the 14th at UTC, just as is, is here locally. But later today, that will advance before uh, my local date advances. That's a 24 hour dial right there. Now around here, you can see, you know, the, the different markers for the hour. And then there are some signs of the zodiac there. That doesn't really mean much to me, but it, it's, it's kind of, you know, interesting to have that on there as uh, the decorations, as far as I'm concerned. Now, also you can see within this uh, main part of the clock, there's uh, the sun in the middle, and it's showing some planets uh, around the sun, and those actually do change positions as this thing uh, advances in normal operation. Now, there are some rings around the edge of this, and they are marked Moon, Mercury, Venus... Uh, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. So it's showing you the relative position of those planets. And uh, the, the ring extends for what would be like, here's the moon ring, and it's showing you moon rise and moon set, how they appear on, and if you look at the, uh, the outer dial here, it's a 24 hour clock. So this is showing me, and, and right now, today is the official new moon. So it's showing me that the moon is coming up at about the same time as sunrise here, and then it's going down at about the same time as sunset here. And so there is a, a ring here kind of indicating, you know, civil twilight and sunrise and, and all those things. And then uh, along the outer edge of the of this 24 hour dial there you have a little a little arrow indicating that's when solar noon will will happen in my location and then on the opposite end showing you when it would be you know exactly 
I guess you'd maybe say solar midnight at my location. This will automatically display things based on your current location if you've enabled it and allowed it in your uh, in your app settings to access your location, or you could manually uh, put in latitude and longitude for some other location if you don't want it to, uh, you know, use your exact location. But it will uh, reference the time zone based on uh, the time zone of your device. So keep that in mind if you're wanting to uh, set the, uh, the, the location manually to something that's outside of your time zone. All right, now over here, there's the eclipse simulator. And uh, we, I guess we got uh, kind of close to an eclipse. Um, maybe in another part of the world, there was a little bit of a solar eclipse uh, today. Uh, but that's showing me what how how close we came to an eclipse at my location. Oh wait, hang on. Let me just show you quickly what it looked like when we had a near total eclipse of the sun uh, just about three years ago here uh, where I live. So okay, this is the day after that. But let me just uh, let me just take this back and we'll go back here. And you can see. Oh, did you see that uh, the eclipse simulator? How that went. So let's just do this. Uh, advance the minute. So this is going to show you how that eclipse played out. And as you can see, that's kind of the peak of our near total eclipse. Uh, it was a total eclipse if you were just a little bit farther north of us. But here that's showing that the local time when that happened was again, uh, it was Monday, August 21st, 2017. And it was just about uh, 1140 or so uh, in the morning when we had a near total eclipse. And so it's got that eclipse simulator window that shows you that. And again, you can kind of advance the minute or take it back and see exactly how the eclipse would have looked at that time. And then down here, something called equation of time. And so what that is showing is um, as, the, as the sun moves around that line, we call the analemma. Sometimes what would be solar noon would be a little bit later or a little bit earlier, and that is indicated by the equation of time right there. Now over here on the opposite side, this is kind of fun. Well, first of all, here on top, you see the phase of the moon, and that is indicating what the moon would look like today. And then right here, it's showing you the relative positions of um, different uh, celestial objects that you choose. So right here, Mar uh, Mars, right? It's showing Mars is actually, the altitude is below the horizon. But if you could see Mars, it would be uh, just in the northeast. Now, if I if I tap this, it's showing me that Venus is almost due south of where I am right now, and it's 30 degrees above the horizon. Now, since it's daytime and it's actually cloudy today too, I can't see Venus. But uh, this would be useful at night if I wanted to scroll through. You see Mercury, same information. The Moon is showing you the Moon is up, but you know I can't see it with the uh, because it's a new moon and because it's cloudy and the sun also is showing me that that, that is uh, south southeast in the sky at an altitude of roughly 20 degrees above the horizon so you can scroll through those and if you tap this upper dial here you scroll the opposite direction so it's kind of fun to watch watch those uh Watch those things in the sky using this as your guide. Now up here on the upper right side of the display, you can see uh, a small map of the Earth, a kind of a Mercator projection style map. It's a little bit difficult to see, but it does show that Terminator line showing the places where it's uh, daytime and where it's nighttime on the surface of the Earth right now. And there's a little tiny red dot that actually indicates my location on this map. So, um, you know, that, that's kind of small and it's, uh, it's, it's like a mini geocron. and you can't see it very well, but there it is. Obviously, you've got the, the day of the week and the, uh, the date also down here on the bottom. Now, the, these things will change positions slightly if you were to turn it on uh, for, a, you know, a, a portrait mode instead of a landscape mode. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to keep it on landscape. And up here, there's a little, uh, it says the word set right above that 12 o'clock position. If I tap that, then uh, you can see it's stopped the clock. And now if I tap on one of these blue words, it will advance by a minute or an hour or a day or advance to the next phase of the moon or advance a full month from uh, from you know from the last time i tapped there or go how about a year ahead or how about a century ahead 
And uh, so the funny thing is, okay, let me just reset this and start from the current time. And if I tap and hold minute, you can see that it just shows me the, you know, the clock advancing quickly. Or if I want to go really uh, much faster than hour, and you can see how, how that affects all the other things on the display. If I hold that down, okay. If I go, uh, hold down day, then you can see it's showing me the phase of the moon changing and showing a whole bunch of things like that. And also, uh, you may have noticed that these rings around around the clock have also changed positions as I scroll quickly, uh, you know, backward or forward with days. So there it's showing me, uh, you know, how the, the position of these celestial bodies has changed from day to day. And also, uh, you know, my, my sunrise and sunset information has gotten uh, longer or shorter, depending on how quickly I'm scrolling through all these dates. So you can, you, it's, it's kind of cool that you can, you can choose any, any date you want and time of day and uh, figure out well, what would be the position of all these celestial objects uh, during um, these different, different times on different days. And then of course, you, if you just tap reset, it'll take you back right to the current conditions. And it's kind of fun to watch how the, the clock face is animated to uh, to take you back to that. That's pretty straightforward as far as everything I've shown you here. Now there's a little uh, a little eye in a circle down here in the bottom right. And if I tap that, then it gives me just a few little things that I can uh, I can set here. So uh, as you can see up here, uh, top row al alarm. So right now, if I wanted to, I could just uh, turn that on. And here, you know, I can set the alarm to whatever I want, uh, you know, whatever time of day or night. So again, you have an alarm on or off there. Uh, here you can change that clock to either have noon on top or you can have the opposite. Let me just show you there quickly. Now I've got uh, zero hour midnight on top and noon on the bottom if I wanted as far as this dial that's showing all of the, the celestial objects. But I think I'll, I'll put it back to the default noon on top. Here you, it says use location services. So this is where if I turn that off, then I can go in here and I can type some other uh, latitude and longitude. And, uh, you know, then it would show me all these other things that it's doing in the sky based on this other location. And here it's giving me a warning <laughs> because I've changed it uh, to say that uh, I've mismatched the uh, time zone that uh, with, with the location that I've selected. But uh, here it will show you if I take this back how, yeah, everything, everything gets thrown off wildly because I've just set my location. I see the little red dot is now somewhere around, what is that, around Spain or some, or Northern Africa or somewhere like that. So, uh, you know, I think I'll go back here and change this to use location services. And then it's just going to use my current location to figure out uh, my relative position with all these other things. Now, right here, I like this disable auto lock. So if you wanted to, you could turn that on and uh, here uh, turn on to prevent automatic sleep when it's plugged in. So as long as I'm plugged into power, if I wanted to just leave this sitting there and have it be something, you know, set it on my desk or something, put it in a stand and have it just run all the time and, and show this all day long without shutting down automatically, you know, because sometimes you, you know, you've set your, your tablet to time out after a while. If you don't touch it, you know, it'll turn itself off. Well, I've just disabled that. So if I wanted to have this sitting there all day long and, and have a pretty clock for me, um, well, I've done that. Or if I wanted to even prevent it from turning off automatically, even when it's on battery, then I would uh, use that other disable auto lock switch. So uh, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. I've really enjoyed it. Like I said, 99 cents. And if you have an iPad, this is a this is a great app to have. Like I said, Emerald Sequoia, they've developed some other apps for other systems. And I, I really don't know why this really great app is only available for iOS and only available for iPad uh, right now and for the last several years. But I thought, you know, again, anybody out there has an iPad, here's a great app to try out for 99 cents. I've enjoyed it a lot. And so there you go. All right, that's all for now. And I hope you will join me again soon for another episode of The Good Timekeeping Show.